Good evening, folks. Miami Beach Audits here. Now, there's another case of Channel 10 reporting fake news or lying about what happened by reporting the official police line. I don't think this guy deserved to get tased for hitting a fender of a cop car with a Hennessy bottle. The cop car nearly ran him down. I'll explain the situation as I analyze the article. Now, the first paragraph is correct, true, and accurate. The second paragraph misquotes the location, and both the time is correct. It actually happened at 11th Street and Ocean Court. Court. Now here you see 11th Street and Ocean Drive. Ocean Drive is close to traffic. So is 11th Street between Ocean Court and Ocean Drive. Now these guys started out walking in this direction down 11th Street toward College Avenue. Now you can't see the sidewalk in the satellite view because it's obscured by the building. The edge of the roof of the building lets you see almost exactly where the curb is. Now these barricades are set up across 11th Street to prevent traffic from going east from Ocean Court. Now, Collins Avenue is over here. They never got that far. The police car came up Ocean Court while these guys were walking down the obscured sidewalk on the south side of 11th Street. This is what it looks like when you're coming from Ocean Drive. Okay, now you see how the wall of the building over here on your left, that goes right up to the alley to Ocean Court. You have the barricades where this part of the road is closed to traffic. And then, when you get to Ocean Court, you have this blind corner where the pedestrians can't see the vehicles coming up the street or coming up the alley. And the vehicles can't see the pedestrians, which is why there's a stop sign there backed up against the do not enter. A stop sign that the cop ran. So the guy was walking down the sidewalk and the cop on his way to the call went right through the stop sign. Now the guy never intentionally hit the cop car with the bottle of Hennessy. He was holding the bottle of Hennessy in his hand and when he stepped out as the cop was coming out of the alley, passenger side door of the cop car hit the bottle of Hennessy. And it didn't and break. he spun around this way to his right. At which point the cop stopped the car and jumped out. With his front wheels right here and his uh, car completely blocking the sidewalk, and his back wheels back in the alley behind the stop sign. So that the car was obstructing not only this couple's progress along the sidewalk, but a bunch of other people as well. So they all started pounding on the car, on the windows, with their fists. Bottle never hit a window. Now if you'll notice at the foot of Ocean Court, there's a curb cut right here. So it appears to a pedestrian like it's a driveway. Now there's no sign as you come to the edge of the building that says, caution, blind driveway. Now think about it, how would you react if a car came out of a driveway and nearly hit you when you were walking down the sidewalk? And then the driver jumped out and approached you and tried to grab what you had in your hand. Now why are you supposed to react any differently just because the driver has a clown suit, a badge, and a gun? Now I don't know if it's true that he was responding to an emergency call regarding a stabbing, but if he was, he shouldn't have stopped a car. He didn't hit the pedestrian. So why did he abort en route to an emergency call for something that's trivial? An open container violation? Now I don't doubt that McMiller pushed the sergeant chest. I probably would have done the same thing in the same situation. Now, I don't doubt that they said what it says they said here. Because uh, they were agitated, they were both drunk, and they just nearly got hit by a car walking down the sidewalk. And I can't refute this paragraph, it's factual and truthful. Now this one's an outright lie. Because how could a, being surrounded by a crowd prevent him from calling for backup and he procedure said he was supposed to have activated the body worn camera when he exited the car. Now at this point is where the bystander video begins. Now the bystander video shows the sergeant tasing McMiller. Now as far as the second paragraph goes, you can't hear in the bystander video, so she may or may not have said that. Now the third paragraph agrees with what the bystander video shows. The question is, why did the cop deploy this taser in the first place? Why didn't he just get back in his car and continue on to the emergency stabbing call? And then he tased the woman because she made eye contact with him? That sounds fishy. Now, Channel 10 embedded the bystander video in their story, but I wasn't able to find it standalone. So I can't show it to you here. I'm going to put a link in the description to the Channel 10 story, and you can go watch the bystander video there. Now this first paragraph looks a little bit specious, because 
if there was so much noise you couldn't hear what the, anyone was saying there, how is it that the sound of the stun gun didn't get drowned out by the crowd noise? They're not that much louder than people's voices when they're shouting. Especially when there's a large crowd with a whole bunch of them shouting at once. This Miami Beach audit somehow. I'll see you on the next one. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe, and hit that bell notification.